I'll be honest with you guys, I'm kind of a shitty Mega Man fan. I mean, there are just a ton of Mega Man games out there that I haven't played, but I don't think I'm the only one. Sure, just about every big Mega Man fan out there has played the Classic and X series, but after that, I think a lot of us have a pretty spotty track record. I can't speak for everyone, but at least for me, it was because they started changing shit. Who's this Battle Network Mega Man and why does he look so weird? Mega Man Zero? Am I supposed to believe that is Zero? He looks all wrong. Network Trends what now? Star who? Like I said. I'm a shitty Mega Man fan. Looking back, I was definitely just being immature. I mean, I was like 13 when Battle Network came out, so that's probably why I was being immature. And I probably missed out on a lot of good shit because I was so resistant to change. The Zero series is actually really solid, and I still haven't given Battle Network a fair shake. Once again, shitty Mega Man fan. By the time Mega Man ZX came out, yes, ZX, that is a thing, the series had pretty much faded into obscurity. Just look at these sales numbers. Mega Man 2, one and a half million copies. Mega Man X, over a million. Mega Man Zero, only half a million. Battle Network, less than half a million. And finally, ZX with only a quarter million. People had stopped caring, and that's probably why I had no idea Mega Man ZX was actually really freaking good! So this game kicks off with my favorite thing ever in a Mega Man game, plot! Granted, it doesn't take too long, and it's pretty interesting and relevant. Basically, you, this blue guy, are some kind of transporter, and your boss is this red guy with long blonde hair named Jiro. Mega Man is nothing, if not formulaic. Basically, you're delivering some high-profile package to a group called the Guardians, when you suddenly get jumped by Mavericks and get sent flying along with the package. You then happen to run right into these Guardians you were supposed to deliver the package to, so that works out nicely. Maybe the Mavericks just didn't want you to be late with your delivery. Anyway, the package turns out to be this glowy-ass floating thing called a Biometal. In this case, Biometal Model X. You see where this is going? Well, a big ass snake maverick shows up and wipes the floor with these little guardian dudes, and it looks like it's up to you to save the day. You merge with the biometal in a glorious 240p cinematic and become Mega Man X, but not really. And it's here that you're given control of your character. We've arrived at a critical juncture, the single most important moment in any Mega Man game. How do the controls feel? They feel great. Oh. Yeah. Seriously, this was such a big moment for me. The last time I fired up a Mega Man game and was given control of X himself was over a decade ago. And this may not literally be X, but I mean, come on, it's X. You've got the dash, you've got the X buster, the wall climb, the responsive controls. And since the DS has four buttons instead of just two like the GBA, you can once again set dash to the A button and relive the Super Nintendo glory days. Oh, Mega Man X, how I've missed you. I could seriously make an entire video about how good this moment was was for me, but we should probably move on. So you catch up with this big snake maverick, which is a robot from Slither Incorporated. I can't make this stuff up, folks. Slither is supposedly a peacekeeping company that intervenes when there are maverick outbreaks and helps neutralize the threat and clean up the mess. And it just so happens that some of their robots are going maverick. Sketchy? Absolutely. Healthy business model? Oh yeah. Well, you dispose of the snake, and the next thing on the agenda is to find Zero, I mean Jiro, who's been missing since you first got separated. Well, you go out searching for him, and you have to fight this plane. Or are you fighting the boxes? It's hard to tell who the true villain is here. Well, Jiro decides to make an incredibly show-offy appearance, and surprise, surprise, he's got red armor and a saber. Turns out he's got the Z biometal, and you're both the biometal's chosen ones. Jiro, just what is a biometal? I don't understand what's going on. Please give me some exposition. Apparently Zero, I mean Jiro, had this Z biometal for a while now, and is sworn to protect you because he knew you were the chosen one for the X biometal, and that people would be coming after you, etc., etc. Well, you head back to HQ, and you're there for all of two minutes, when suddenly there are of a maverick attack. Oh goodness, whatever shall we do? So you and Jiro head out to the highway area to deal with this maverick threat, and I know this is just nostalgia talking, but I gotta say, the fact that this whole level is a reference to the highway intro stage in Mega Man X was the moment I knew I was gonna love this game. Check it out. There are rolling dudes, big spark shooting dudes, flying dudes, crumbling platforms, and uh, giant bees! They even crash through the floor the same way when you beat them. Maybe this whole thing is just pandering, but shit. It worked. Well, the end of this level is where things get interesting. You find Jiro, who's been subdued by these three dudes, and then they do some glowy shit to him, which turns him against you, and once again, X and Zero have to fight each other. I've lost count of how many times this has happened now. Once you beat Jiro, these three show up again, and their leader introduces himself as Serpent, the leader of Slither Incorporated, who looks a hell of a lot like Sigma, by the way, so that pretty much confirms all your suspicions about Slither. So you get pretty much wrecked, and Jiro pretty much dies, and pretty much the only way you can survive is if the Model Z and Model X biometals join together 
together, and that's pretty much what happens. We see another pristine 240p cinematic of the biometals merging, and out pops Mega Man ZX, and now you know why the game is called that. Now, I know you're probably dying to try out your new powers and kill something, but let's go back to headquarters for some plot! It's at this point that the game world opens up to you, and you're able to select from four different missions. As Model ZX, your powers are pretty much what you'd expect. You've got a Z-Saber and an X-Buster, and you can freely switch between the two situationally. Oh yeah, and did I mention? This game is open world! You can pretty much go back and revisit any location you've already been to, and you'll have to do so quite frequently to get to new areas. It's definitely a good idea, but I feel like it may not have been executed as well as it could have been. For starters, most open world games have what's called a map. Mega Man ZX has this. This is not a map. This is a mess. Let's say you're here in area B1, B being short for because they felt like it, and you want to get over here to B2. Well, you might think you need to go down and to the left because that's where it looks like B2 is, but that's almost never the case in this game. The doors to the next area can be anywhere in the area you're in, not just on either end. They can even be these doors that are built into the background. It seems totally arbitrary sometimes. So let's say your mission tells you to go to area F. Well, if you knew F was right here, you could probably find it pretty easily, but the map starts out completely blank. Blank. So the most logical course of action would be to try to go alphabetically, so maybe area F borders area E or G. Nope! It's almost completely random. So what ends up happening when you get a new mission is you wander aimlessly until you find the area you're looking for, then save at the nearest save point and attempt to beat that area, including the boss at the end, until you run out of lives and get a game over and are put back at the save point. So it's basically just a Mega Man X game, but instead of a stage select screen, you get to wander aimlessly for half an hour. I like that this game is open world, but it really has no reason to be, especially with this live system that sends you way back to a save point when you get a game over, which just makes it feel like an outdated platformer. But that's really all the shit I don't like about this game. Now let's talk about the awesome stuff! Like I mentioned before, the controls faithfully mimic Mega Man X and Mega Man Zero, and they're fully customizable, so no matter what configuration you're used to, you'll be able to find something that's comfortable. And that's important, because this game is very challenging. But I count that as a good thing. It's not as hard as some of the Zero games, which can be nightmarishly frustrating at times, but I'd say it's tougher than the X series as a whole. Normally in Mega Man games, defeating a boss gives you a special power, and while that is very much the case in Mega Man ZX, there's an interesting twist to it. There are actually more biometals than just Model Z and Model X, and the Maverick boss bosses get their power from these other biometals, so when you beat a boss, you get the biometal and another transformation, which gives you a whole set of new useful powers that let you explore and help to open up the game world. Hunting down bosses knowing I was going to get a new transformation as a reward was one of the single most enjoyable and exciting aspects of this game. Sure, special weapons are great, but getting to completely change your appearance and how your character plays is way more interesting. The other transformations happen to be based on the four guardians from Mega Man Zero, so if you're a fan of those games, this part will be even cooler for you. There's also also this neat weak point system in place when you fight bosses, where the more you exploit a boss's weak point, the more damaged a biometal will be when you retrieve it from them, meaning it'll have less weapon energy for you to use. So there's like this built-in challenge mode if you want your biometals to be as strong as possible as soon as you get them. But you can always repair damaged biometal back up to full power with these energy crystals you find, so eventually it balances out. I just think it's a really clever system. You can also transform back to your human form whenever you want, which allows you to interact with the world differently. Certain robots won't attack you, people will actually talk to you, and you can crawl into tight spaces to retrieve items. I've also failed to mention up to this point that there are actually two playable characters to choose from. Vent, aka The Boy, and Ale, aka The Girl. That's pretty much the only difference as far as I can tell. They don't even look different when transformed, so I guess it's just a matter of whether you'd rather hear... or... I know I was kind of shitting on the open world part of this game, but it really is a good thing. If you're not in a rush to get to the next mission, there are plenty of side quests and hidden areas and items to check out. It just doesn't feel seamless. It's not like Super Metroid where you're always simultaneously progressing towards the next objective and exploring and finding new powers. Those things feel very separate in Mega Man ZX, and that could use a little improving in my opinion. Maybe ZX Advent does it better, I have no idea. The main thing I took away from this game was the sad reality that if this game had come out today, like if Capcom was just suddenly like, Introducing Mega Man ZX, and they showed this awesome gameplay and this vibrant art style, people would lose their shit. People are dying for some new Mega Man, and they'd absolutely freak the fuck out. But coming out in 2004, when everyone had pretty much lost faith in Capcom's ability to make a good Mega Man game, this gem went totally unnoticed. So I urge you, if you want some really solid Mega Man X style action and you've never played this game, get yourself a copy of Mega Man ZX and enjoy the ride. This game really is a breath of fresh air, and I'm sad I was one of the many who didn't believe in the series anymore when this game came out. Hey, 
Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I had a lot of fun making it. I had a lot of fun playing Mega Man ZX. If you've never played it, you should go try it. It's pretty good. It's pretty fun. They're not paying me to say that. I just like to tell people about good games. Anyway, if you like this video and you want to see more like it, you just click that subscribe button or I'll kill you. How many times do I have to say it and threaten your life? Come on. I would like to thank all of my generous supporters on Patreon, whose names you see in the credits right now, especially the Icarus Gambit, Mero Ochi, Angel Freisinger, Randall Schultz, the NM22, Mika Bunny, Kayoya, Jake Hester, Stooge, and Ragnaramus. Of course, if you want to support me on Patreon, you can find a link to that down in the description. Every little bit helps. Making my living off of YouTube is a very inconsistent thing, so, you know, whatever. <laughs>